Hey, Mike here. Uh, so the glycol freeze tank has been running for about two two days here. Yeah, I started a Saturday night and it is Monday night. So uh, I gotta say, overall, I'm pretty pleased with the operation. Um, I'll go ahead and pop the door open, just to take a peek there. Uh, see the pan's a little frosted. It just kicked off here about an hour ago, 45 minutes ago or so. Uh, but the fins stay, uh, stay, uh, just to get a little bit of condensate on them. So, um, <clears throat> as far as the operation, as far as the performance of it goes, um, it took about six hours, a little more than six hours for it to freeze the entire tank there to about eight pounds and, uh, and satisfy the thermostat at the same time, uh, bringing the temperature down to 35, I think, was about where I had it set. Um, <clears throat> From there, I went to bed and uh, got up the next morning kind of all excited to see what had happened. And, uh, well, we got uh, nine hours out of that first run. So uh, I'm really, really pleased with that. Um, it was cool that night. And then the next morning when I got up, uh, I noticed that uh, when I opened the shop door up, uh, it was a little bit uh, warmer in the shop than it was outside. Uh, so when I opened the shop door up, uh, cooled down just a few degrees uh, in the shop here. And uh, I noticed that the thermostat reading actually started to drop a little bit, which is something you wouldn't normally see with a, a refrigerator systems that I've had so far. Typically, if the temperature of the ambient uh, drops a little bit, uh, the temperature rise of the refrigerator uh, slows, but it's not going to drop. But, of course, I have all that stored cooling capacity in that pan and all that frozen glycol um, that's probably freezing somewhere around... 26, maybe the low 20s, I'm not sure. Um, and, and it is a range too, because it's not a pure eutectic mixture, it's a non-eutectic. Um, so it has a, a temperature slope that it's, uh, that it's freezing and thawing at. Um, since then, I've seen run times anywhere from about an hour and a half to six hours is the longest, but typically an hour and a half to two and a half hours. And then off times of about uh, um, anywhere from about three and a half hours to you know, as long as nine hours, but usually it's like three and a half to like six hours. So, uh, for instance, today, um, it was off all morning. Uh, it, it shut off right uh, before I left, and then it was off until about noon, um, so about five or six hours there. And then from then on, it just ran continuously um, until I got home here tonight. Now, the, uh, the thermostat wasn't satisfied, but uh, the fridge was maintaining. Uh, it was 34 degrees in the bottom, you know, because it was 90 degrees ambient in here. So the fact that it even uh, is able to maintain it all is, is surprising. Um, but one thing I knew that I was going to have to change is the, uh, the thermo, uh, thermostat probe. Um, made a little modification there. So it's just a, a metal, I think it's a thermocouple. Um, and, uh, with this machine previously, um, I've always noticed that um, if the thermostat is getting kind of close to the set point there to kick on, just opening up the door and putting a little warm air in there, it'll immediately kick it on, which which is fine. Um, but in the case of a glycol system like this, where um, I'm storing all that cooling energy in the pan, and then when the system is off, um, that stored um, uh, cooling capacity um, in the form of that ice, uh, melts and absorbs heat from the fridge and you know heat leakage mostly through the walls of the fridge into the refrigerator cabinet um, so having the compressor kick on is perhaps inappropriate for where that freeze thaw cycle is uh, simply giving it a few minutes might allow the temperature to fall um, the thermostat itself has a lot of features um, but uh, delay start in this capacity is not one of them. It does have a delay start, but it just prevents me from cycling the switch on and off. I can set it for two minutes or five minutes, whatever I want. So that if the user flips the switch off and flips it back on, it will, you know, it won't allow it to, to run for whatever set point that is. Um, what I would prefer in, in, in that uh, the capacity I'm referring to is a delay start in such that, um, let's say I have it set for 34 to 39 degrees and it's sitting there at 38 and it's, the system's off and I whip the door open, I get some beer out, maybe I stick around a little bit, let a little bit of warm air in there, let's spill some of the cold air out and immediately the thermostat, uh, the temperature reading of the thermostat um, suddenly rises and immediately it kicks on. Bumps up to 44 degrees, let's say. Well, 
if I were to close the door, if I were to turn the switch off, turn the power off, open the door, took my beer out, close the door, and let it sit for five minutes, that uh, that tank itself has that stored cooling capacity, it would, uh, um, theoretically, um, it would eventually cool it back down. And that seems to be generally the case. Um, but that thermostat doesn't have that capacity. And um, really, if I'm trying to design this thing to be useful for multiple different cabinets and different designs, that, that set point, that delay, start, or whatever, uh, might vary. So let's keep it simple. Um, if I'm adding thermal mass in the form of phase change material, I'm adding uh, a, a flywheel, you know, if, if you will, uh, to the refrigeration circuit, um, then on the other side of things, then the, uh, the thermostat probe should have um, something of that, uh, a little bit of mass. So that's what I did there. I took a little chunk of uh, Delrin that I had left over from, from the first project. These posts got cut off whenever I put this new tank in. Uh, these used to be mounted in there. Um, but I took a section of Delrin about that long and drilled a hole all the way through it and then uh, put, the, put the thermostat probe in there, uh, along with a thermal couple that uh, is tied to the logger there. Uh, I wrapped a little bit of tape around the um, the thermostat probe um, uh, to prevent you know metal to metal contact and any of that. Um, and then I dabbed some hot glue on both ends and holes, uh, holes on both ends. So in case I need you know need to take it back apart sometime, it might make it a little bit easier. But um, so anyway, just adding that little mass of plastic, I'm hoping should help a little bit, such that. Uh, you know, that plastic is, is is cool, has a little bit of mass. I whip the door open, uh, the, temp, the the reading that the thermostat sees is not going to uh, rise so suddenly. So that's the idea at least. Um, I had the system off right now because I had the door open for a while and I was dicking around and touching the thermostat probe and uh, put some hot glue in there. So obviously the temperature went up, uh, up into the 70s or 80s, actually up in the 90s. Um, and so I popped it back in there and it's slowly coming down in temps, about 52 degrees right now. Um, so I'm just gonna let the thing chill for a while considering that the machine shut off not too long ago and it should hold for several hours. Uh, I'm just gonna let it off for a while and see where things kind of settle out, get an idea how it's working. Uh, on the other side of things, um, data collection, I decided because I'm dealing with such long run cycles and such long um, uh, off cycles, that uh, it seemed ridiculous to run at the uh, sample rate that I was, which is about five seconds. Um, so I bumped her up to 15 seconds. So instead of it just showing me um, a few few hours here, that these were about 40 minutes a piece, 42 minutes a piece, with the 15 seconds um, at the longest, actually right now I have it, 200 samples visual right here. So each one of these is uh, 10 minutes. So that's actually very useful. It's exactly 10 minutes for each one. Um, if I bump it up to 2,500, which is the max that it will show at any one time, it's a little over 10 hours, 10 and a half hours or something. So it works out to about two hours a piece. Um, and like I said, if, I'm, if it's off for six hours and it runs for an hour and a half or something like that, I can actually see that without having to scroll back and forth because the software is a little, little glitchy. Um, particularly when you get high in, in uh, sample numbers that are collected. I was up into the 200,000s and it's really unnecessary to collect that much information. Additionally, running at 15 sa uh, a sample every 15 seconds uh, smooths out some things. Because um, um, once you have that low sample rate, you start to think there's things there that maybe aren't. Um, might have something to do with the placement of the sensor or the construction of the sensor or some galvanic action or some bullshit. So. Anyway, I'm just going to keep an eye on things, and uh, pretty soon I'm going to be building another um, little stainless project. I need to get some more stainless, and I'm going to build a little uh, condensate uh, catch drip tray and uh, sort of a baffle thing going on. So.